Well, this quilt is a quilt that was made by my fifth grade class in Atlanta to celebrate the Georgia book list. Every year, the state of Georgia would make a, a list of books that all children should read. I was competitive and nerdy at the same time, which meant that I wanted to read all the books on the list. And my teacher, uh, Mrs. Gaither, had us make this quilt where Every block represented one of the books on the list. She gave me this little sailboat. The one that I wanted to sew was this one with these music notes. I thought it was really cute, but she gave it to a more coordinated child. As you can see, our class won the blue ribbon. And I just love that Mrs. Gaither kept it all these years. She sent it to me. She said to congratulate me on my books. And it's one of my prized possessions. <laughs> It's a novel about bigamy, not like the big love religious bigamy, the, the lying cheating kind of bigamy, the kind of bigamy that you find out like usually when a man dies, the other family shows up. I was really interested in the family who knows that there to be a secret because I was thinking there's no way that a man can do kind of local bigamy. I know like the traveling salesman bigamy, but if you're doing local bigamy, one of these women and her children have to work with you to keep the secret. And I was really interested in what is it to not just keep a secret, but to understand oneself to be a secret. Music for Torching by A.M. Holmes. This suburban dystopia at its best. It's about these people who are renovating their home and then they don't want to renovate the home anymore. So they knock over the like the barbecue grill and then they decide they're just going to let it burn down and they just get their kids and leave but the house doesn't burn down so then they have to live in a half burned down house. I'm always actually mentioning it to my students because my students are often writing against suburbia. I use this book to show them that you can be wickedly funny and wickedly smart at the same time. <laughs> I think Northerners should read all manner of Southern literature. I think Southern writing is changing so much that there is the urban South, which is kind of what I do. I write about Atlanta. I don't think that there is a Southern aesthetic the way there, there, well, there never has been a Southern aesthetic. What there was, was that certain kinds of Southern writers were said to be the Southern writers, but there has always been diversity among Southern writers. There's Randall Keenan, who is North Carolina writer. My favorite is Let the Dead Bury Their Dead. His writing about being Southern, being black, being gay, like being all these things at the same time. People always think the North is like the melting pot part of the United States. But I mean, there's so much diversity in the South, even among people who, if you give it like a drive-by look, you would think you're looking at a homogenous group. There are just so many layers and so many ways of being Southern. I have very odd influences. Dying Young by Marty Leinbach. It's a very good book that they made into a very sentimental movie, but it's about a dying man and his nurse who've fallen in love. And he never would have fallen in love with her had he not been dying. And they're both very clear on that. It's about class in Boston and language. Things that I thought were Southern issues or racial issues. A lot of really terrific books get categorized in a way like, look at the cover they put on this thing. You don't really expect brilliance with such a cover, but there's brilliance in here. You can never confuse the marketing with the book. Some mornings like to just um, help me get going. If I'm really blocked and I just feel like, if I feel blah, like I can't get enough, just can't get my juices going, I will kind of break out the tambourine. You know, sometimes I just kind of like, just hit it a little bit or I take it off the hip, you know. But that's only in extreme cases. Even though I am a complete adult human being, I love children's picture books. I just take such pleasure from how beautiful they are. Look how pretty that is. Ellington was not a street. When I used to have a different place, I used to put them on stands and just have them around my writing table. People come to my house with the cutest children, and I think I should give that cute child my book, but I'm not.